With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Oh, man. Whew. Kind of had to work with that a little bit here. After all, it is still Monster Fest. And, you know, we got a bit of things coming up right now. And, you know, the first thing I'm going to do is give you guys a nice mixed bag of tricks, after all, because welcome to the J-Man Show here on G360 Radio. Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky. Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere playing at luckylandslots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. <laughs> oh, that never gets old. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the J-Man Show for episode 314. Monster Fest. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And continuing with the Monster Festivities, we do have a special episode happening tonight. It's going to be a little bit of a mixed bag, though. It's not going to just be Nightmare Tales, even though Nightmare Tales are involved. I'm going to go ahead and splice it up with a little bit of Tales from... Bizarre times, and not to mention like crazy times building the J-Man show, in addition to some of the real-life monsters that are out here, such as, like, you heard about that mass shooting in Maine? Really, though, it, this is the upteen time, and, and you know what's really crazy about all this? Is the fact that, you know, I guess either a lot of people are tired of having the gun conversation, or... Or other people are just really seeing that there is no end to any of this stuff in sight. This seems to happen a whole lot. And, you know, a lot of people in general, like, I wait for fall time so I can go out to places. So I can, you know, live my life, enjoy it. Like, because summer sometimes, I do it in the summertime too, but it just, it can be really, really hot. It can be really, really annoying, especially if you're waiting in line for a long period of time, you know. But with fall, it's a lot more, like, calmer. You're walking around, having a good time. Things are more, like, enjoyable. Like, the weather's nicer, and, like, it isn't that bad. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes you get some nice Indian summer, and then sometimes you get, like, other times where, like, um, I'm trying to put this in the best term I can put it. Like, there isn't too many people around, so you can actually get around and stuff like that, you know? Beach traffic and all, and tourists every damn where, but not in the fall time, you know? Just easy breezy, but not when some jerk that thinks that they're doing the right thing decides to take, uh, you know, matters in their own hands and shoot up the streets. It's just, oh, God. I, I'm, I'm tired, man. 
Like, I get tired of this crap all the time, and, like, it's even to the point where you're desensitized talking about it. Desensitized even reporting it. And it's like, this, this is terrible. And then sometimes, you know, there are people out there that have a reason for it. Oh, my wife left me. I couldn't find another job or anything. Or any variations of that. Or nobody sees me, so now they'll see me. And then they try to off themselves in the end. Some of them kind of botch it up. Or some of them know too much to the point where, like, you know, they're too dangerous to be alive, but they don't want to kill them because cruel and unusual punishment. Or, you know, hey, there's moments where the justice system just doesn't work. There's a whole, whole load to unpack with that. But the thing is, it's an ongoing horror story because it just never stops. The cycle keeps continuing regardless of whom it may be. And the thing about it is, you got some people that come from good homes. So any of that stuff where like you watch like uh, the first 48 or you watch um, Forensic Files and they tell you about the good nature and the good upbringing and all that stuff as a way of humanizing the person and tugging them heartstrings for a little bit. Yeah, no. That stuff doesn't apply. And even then, no matter what the reason is, it's not a good reason to take somebody else's life if you think about it. Now, there are moments where, like, you know, people do that stuff because of the inadequacy of the Justice Department and everything. Like, you know, those that, like, really were harmed by society and all that stuff, but still, it, it makes you wonder, like, are we really capable of being judged, jury, and executioner about this stuff? And that is the most wicked thing about it. You know what I mean? Now, my food for thought is, it's like, depends on the severity of the crime, and it depends on exactly what all led to this, while at the same time, we're keeping it in the, we're keeping it in the present. We're not thinking about the past. We're not thinking about all that kind of stuff. Like, I know I'm not supposed to talk about this guy, but, you know, for example, why, why exactly did Michael Myers kill Judith? Well, it varies, right? Because there's so many circumstances of that movie. But the main reason is... Because he wanted to. You know, like, like if anything else, that, that is like the most basic, <laughs> direct way. It's generalized, yes, but it's like this. Because he wanted to. Or like, why does anybody do any sort of circumstance to inflict bodily harm to someone else and yada, yada, yada? Because in the end, he or she, let's be inclusive, right? He or she wanted to. And it's a damn shame that it has to come down to that, but some people feel that way. Some people are so territorial. Some people are so closed-minded. Some people are so, well, insane about it. And the sad part is, it's like, they probably enjoyed doing it, and they probably don't care that they did it in the aftermath of it all. And there's a lot to it, too. Like, I always point out, like, how the media reports this stuff as well. It's like, oh, so you're going to make somebody look like a hero and a villain, aren't you? Because, you know, they always take a different angle on how to write things. I mean, it's it's a lot to it. But, you know, it's a very nightmare way of doing things, too. And I'm just like, ugh, disgusting. But like I say, you know, this is the one that was just recently reported in the news. And like I say, you know, you always look to see what's next. And you see a lot of people say prayers for an area. Like, a lot of y'all were saying prayers for Gaza, too. And I was like... Prayers for Israel, prayers for Palestine, and you know, y'all were saying all that stuff, but here's the thing, save some time, pray for the world, we're not done yet. I'm still here, you're still here, and all of our peers and compatriots are still here, and it doesn't take long for any of us to go ahead on that deep end, about anything, you know what I'm saying? You just look at everybody after a while, and you just always just pay attention. So all I can really tell you guys to do is just really pay attention. Oh, he was my best friend. We had good times. We we went to we went to BJ's. And we went to um, any of these outlets, Dave and Buster's, all this stuff together. We went to go see Five Nights at Freddy. Uh, you know, like I never knew that that person was gonna snap eventually. You never do now. It's always a thing. You will never know. Like how some of y'all be like this. Oh, well, I'm glad I'm not that close to any of my internet friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? After all, like, you know, like people in the net are crazy. People in general. 
You never know. I'm sure you have one person in your friends group that does not like you as much as you think they do. Oh, they know you. Oh, they 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 eat food with you. I mean, come on now. Like say like if you're dating, right? That person you went on the date with ate food with you. Hell, you probably paid for it. Most likely. But you see the crazy thing is you forget those people on the internet, they're people too. And there is really no differential because it doesn't take long for any of them to snap. Especially if you're working with that person. There, there's so many lines of factors. What I'm saying is don't be surprised about the monsters that exist around you. Because they're never going to reveal themselves like that. That's like Superman going to work. Superman doesn't go to work as Superman. You do know that. You know? Try to use that principle about things. If you can. Like, I make references to a lot of fictional characters, but a lot of fictional characters are a template for how some people function in reality. Do you see what I'm saying? Wild, isn't it? It's just like when I tell you to check that crawl space and stuff. I do that every Monster Fest episode. Because you never know what's living there. Looking at you. Put on your clothes when you went out for the day or something like that. You you never know. Mm. Unnerving, right? Right. By the way, I can go ahead and start you off with a story right now. A lot of y'all like to talk about this. This is called camping. When I was in college, my friends and I liked to go camping. We would find spots that were supposed to be haunted. We thought it would be fun to tell some ghost stories around the fire until someone got too scared. There was one forest nearby we always wanted to camp in. It was close to an old road that not many people used anymore. People said there were plenty of ghosts in that area. We didn't really believe them, but we thought it would be fun there to camp anyway. One weekend, we all got together and headed to the woods with our camping gear. That night we made a fire and told stories like we always did, but it was getting late. And we were almost ready to sleep when someone walked out of the woods and found our campsite. At first we were scared, but we quickly realized this person was some sort of police officer or forest ranger. He was dressed in that kind of clothing. Doing some camping, he asked. We told him we were. We thought it was allowed out there. The man said it was, but we should also be careful. He said lots of bad people hung out in those woods too. He left us alone soon after that, and then we all went to sleep. The next morning, we were headed back to the cows. We stopped at a restaurant for breakfast on the way. The folks at the restaurant asked if we had been out ghost hunting. They said a lot of the college students did that kind of thing. We told them that we were, when we asked if, but when they asked if we'd seen anything, we said we hadn't. But we told them about the man who visited us at our campsite. They thought that was strange because not many officers patrolled those woods anymore. When they asked what the man's clothing looked like, I noticed a picture on the wall, and the man in it looked exactly like the man who visited our campsite. When I told them this, they just looked back at us in shock. That's not possible, the man who owned the restaurant said. That man in the picture was part of the forest patrol, but there was no forest patrol like that anymore. That picture was more than 50 years old. (laughs) Hey, it could be smoky, man. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh wow, that's that's very unnerving right there. But you know what though? Um, a lot of these parks are pretty damn creepy. The hell, they're creepy in the daytime. You have you ever rode through any of the parks and stuff like that? Like, even like with me myself, I take walks in the park all the time. But there are moments on the walking trail, like you are out there and like you don't have any sort of surveillance going on. It could really turn into a crime scene quick if you're not prepared or any of that stuff. Like, it'll take you right out there to where nature is with the water and the brook and everything, but you never know what is on that other side. It could be a bear. It could be, oh, let's just say anything dangerous. It could be a hunter's trap. It could be anything that could go ahead and inflict bodily harm to you. Now, why am I telling you that stuff? Well, I'm letting you know because, like, while parks are nice and everything, and it's good to be around nature, you do need to be safe. And there are times where, like, you never know what is camping on the other side of it. I think the Appalachian Trail is another dangerous one, but, you know, a lot of people go up there all the time, and, you know, they ride their bikes, or they do, like, whatever they like to do, and there's nothing wrong with that. But what it is, is, like, as for usual, if you camping out there, some of them places even say at own risk camping. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Whew, very unnerving with that one, eh? <laughs> oh, man. Hey, speaking of which, um, I remember telling you guys that I was doing the original versus remake with Fright Night, right? And let me just tell you this. The original wins by a punch. That movie's too good. That is definitely a five in Monster Fest history. It already has a scorecard. But for the remake, I wanted to kind of give it a bit of a chance. I wanted to go ahead and be like, hey, look, you're on the lineup this year. Let's see how good you do. And, you know, I think, um, to be honest with you, Colin Farrell did a pretty decent job as Jerry Dandridge. And Anton Yeltsin, RIP, by the way, did a pretty good job as Charlie Brewster. The only thing I, I missed was the actual, you know, was Brad Fidel's music in there. That's pretty much what I missed. Because that was the movie, you know what I mean? And I'm telling you, if you ever need, like, sex to actually be in song form, Come to Me from Fright Night is definitely the song. And you see, without it being in there, it was like something was missing. But as, like, a pretty good, like, kid versus vampire film, it was pretty well done. And then not to mention, like, um, the score that was in there was decent. So what I'm going to say is that, yeah, give it a look sometime. I will definitely give it four bloody knuckles. I enjoyed every bit of it. And, you know, it kept me entertained. And like um, one of the other movies that I saw not too long ago on the Monster Fest. But you're going to have to wait till the scorecard for that one. But, bleh. Was not a fan of it. <laughs> Sometimes I watch these things to scare the hell out of me, and then other times I watch it to bleach out what I, whatever the hell I just saw. Because sometimes it's so bad and it doesn't go anywhere. Muck, yeah, just like Muck. Muck was one of the worst ones next to um, Night Killer. You know, with all the killing in the day and damn that shit was cringe, boy. Good. Let me let me. Speaking of which, see as I go through it, chances are I might um. I might remember it, and I don't want to do all that. Ugh, man. Ugh, don't want to go through that ever again. And fortunately, I won't have to, because it already got scored. Your next story is called Black Eyes. Megan had just gone to bed. She was almost asleep when she heard a knock at the door. I wonder who that could be at the door so late, she said. Megan never got visitors at that hour. She headed to the door and opened it up, and standing on her front porch were two children. One was a girl who looked about six years old, the other was a boy. He looked a couple of years older. For some reason, Megan was scared of him right away. She wasn't sure why. They were just kids, after all, but it seemed like they wanted to hurt her. We need to come in, the boy said. His voice was very polite. Megan thought he almost sounded more like an adult than a child. Why do you need to come in, Megan asked. Our mother will be worried about us. We need to use your phone and call her. Why are you out so late, Megan still wasn't sure why these children scared her so much. She felt like she was at someone truly evil. Usually she would be happy to let two children call their mother, but something about these children were different. Just let us in. Our mother is worried, the boy said. The girl didn't seem like she was going to talk at all. She, just look, she was just looking like she was watching both the boy and Megan. I don't let strangers in my house, Megan said. Tell me your mother's number. I'll call her for you. No. The boy said. He sounded angry now. Let us in. Suddenly, Megan realized why she was so afraid of these children. She just didn't understand why she didn't notice it before. Their eyes were completely black. There was no color at all. Megan felt a chill. It was like they had her in a trance. She knew it should not have taken her that long to not notice their eyes. You can't come in, Megan said. She made sure that they would. She was sure that they would try to hurt her if she let them in. She didn't know why they didn't just force their way in the house. Let us in now, the boy said. No, Megan quickly shut the door. As soon as she had, the boy started pounding on it. Let us in. Let us in, he shouted. Megan wanted to run to the phone, but she was too scared to move. She thought if she turned her back, the boy might open the door and attack her. He pounded on the door for a long time. It might have just been minutes, then it felt like hours, then suddenly he stopped. After a moment, Megan stepped to the window next to the door and looked out. There was no sign of him. Well, you know, if um, if Megan just moved in, <laughs> chances are those two came with the house and didn't have a chance to get the inheritance. If you get my drift. Oh, man. But, you know, some of y'all live in them really old houses anyway, so you got to be careful exactly what you're working with from time to time. Because uh, <laughs> that house has a story longer than you do. 
Possibly. Especially, uh, wait, then again, you can't get away with that if you build a new house because it depends on the land you built it on. I mean, if we're going through poltergeist rules, you know? It's one of those things to think about sometime. Hmm. Oh, speaking of which, though, um, about the power play. Yeah, I managed to do some repairs to it not too long ago, but um, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I need to do some more testing. Not to mention, I managed to get a little bit of a care package for the old birthday coming up. So I'll be able to do some different things to that series so that it's a lot more enjoyable for you all. You all do know that it is on Twitch now. So twitch.tv slash j360tv. I wanted to let you all know that. So while I'm working on the newer, newer stuff for it, yeah, you won't get that episode tonight. Okay, don't groan at me. What I'm saying is I'm letting you know that for an instance here. <laughs> but you will get a lot of new episodes before like the Monster Fest ends. And let me tell you this, though, uh, it's well worth it. And speaking of um, games for the thing, I was playing Spider-Man 2 not too long ago, y'all. And it is off the chain. Love every bit of it. <laughs> yes. I mean, think about it. You got Craven the Hunter in it. You got the Lizard. You got the Black Suit. And that's just to name a few. There's more and more in that story and in that scenario that's just so good. It's like, oh, man, I'm taking my sweet time with it. But I just fought the Lizard. And let me just tell you this. If anybody's played Batman Arkham Asylum, and I know you all have because that game is awesome too. Remember the part with Killer Croc? And how cool that was? Well, this is ten times better than that. And let me just tell you this. Like, you, you feel for it and, like, everything that goes on in that whole scenario. But, damn, Kurt Connors is the lizard. Man. Awesome job that they did on this. So, well worth the wait. And with all the horror elements that are going on in that game, I mean, it wouldn't... I can't blame them for releasing it around here in October. So, Yes. <laughs> early birthday gift for me i'm telling you but i wanted to let you guys know that in a way of letting you know that i'm not slacking on the power play and i have big plans for that series in addition to i wanted to lighten up stuff before i hit you with another horror story right now but yes totally awesome spider-man 2 is you know and i did that yoda talk oh by the way try this one you wake up she doesn't she sent the horror story, man. The funeral attendees never came out of the catacombs. Something locked the crypt door from the inside. Alright, let's give you another one. It sat on my shelf with thoughtless porcelain eyes and the prettiest pink doll dress I could find. Why did she have to be born still? Oh, see, now that's just sick. Okay, you know, I was trying not to do anything dealing with fetals and dead babies this episode. I mean, I did that last time. That's that's not the way to go. Jeez. Anyway, <laughs> let's get back on top of it, though. I, I want to go ahead and uh, end this on a good note. And this is not your final story tonight, as far as I know. Here we go. This one's called Annie's House. Every child in the neighborhood knew the stories about the deserted house. People said a woman named Annie used to live there. She had five children whom she loved very much, and one day there was a big fire. Annie got out, but her children didn't. She went insane after they died. The story said her ghost would still wanted to holes in the alleys in the neighborhood at night looking for her children. Again, every kid knew the story and knew to avoid the house every kid except Danny. He had just moved to the neighborhood with his family, and no one had told him about the house yet. One night, a few days later after moving in, Danny told his parents he was going for a walk around the neighborhood. He hadn't seen much of it yet. Okay, his mother said, but be back soon. I will, Danny said. It was a dark night. The neighborhood was quiet, and Danny thought he might find some other kids playing, but no one was out. Most of the houses were just like his, except for one house at the end of the street. It looked empty. There were no lights on. The grass on the lawn hadn't been cut in a long time, and it looked like there must have been a fire in part of the house at some point. Now, Danny loved to explore these type of places. His parents told him not to, but sometimes he did anyway. There was a fence around the house, but Danny was able to climb over it easily. Something about the place scared him already, but he was too curious not to take a closer look. Danny walked up to the porch and tried to open the door, but it opened easily. 
The inside of the house was dark, too dark, and for a moment Danny almost turned black. No, no, he didn't. <laughs> he almost turned back. I threw that in there for y'all. Come on now. Then he heard a voice. Where are my children? It asked. It sounded like it was coming from upstairs. I'm sorry, Danny said. Where are my children? Is someone here? Danny wanted to walk away, but he couldn't. Do you know where my children are? The voice sounded like it was getting closer. A door opened at the top of the stairs. It was too dark to see clearly, but it looked like a woman stepped out. She started walking slowly down the stairs. Danny just stood watching her. Where are my children? Have you seen them? She asked. I'm sorry, I have to go, Danny said. The woman kept going closer and closer. Danny still couldn't see her clearly. Are you one of my children? She asked. No, Danny said. Even though he wanted to run away, he couldn't stop watching her. He was afraid to turn his back on her. She reached the bottom of the steps and she took a step towards the boy. Now he could see her face clearly. It was a terrible sight. Her eyes were sunken in. Her black hair looked like the tall, messy grass on her lawn. Most of her teeth were missing. The teeth that she did have were rotten. Finally, Danny was able to move. He let out a scream and dashed towards the fence. Are you my child? The voice called out behind him. Danny almost reached the fence but when he tripped over a fallen branch. He tried to pull himself back up, but before he could, a cold hand grabbed him from behind and started dragging him towards the house. He tried to get away, but the hand held him tight. As Annie dragged him back into her house, she kept repeating the same words. Where are my children? Where are my children? She brought Danny back into the house and closed the door behind her. No one ever saw Danny again. Oh, man. Damn! Oh, my God. You know what? That reminds me of that story about Maggie's Bridge. Now, a lot of you J-Man fans out there, you know, you do know about Maggie's Bridge. I've told you about that thousands of times, but yeah, if you ride the, if, oh boy, oh God, I, I got to get it together about that one. <laughs> if you ride across, if you ever travel to Delaware sometimes and you're riding across Maggie's Bridge, if you say, Maggie, I have your baby, chances are Maggie will appear in the car with you. God knows what seat she's going to be in, but allegedly she does appear there with you. And she rides with you, I think, the whole time until you cross the bridge. But, you know, it's one of those things like, even if you could, why would you? So, don't be summoning and opening doors that you have no idea how to close, okay? It's kind of like how some of y'all are out there and you want to summon Cthulhu. But at the same time, you know... You may not summon him because he's a HP Lovecraft creation, but some of y'all might be crazy enough to summon what he's based on, and that's no good for any of us. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It's 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 wild sometimes what people do. Like there are people out there that do be running around. Um, I think they think the spaghetti monster's real. I, hey. I am not here to judge you based on your beliefs. What I am uh, doing, though, is looking at you like, what the hell were you thinking? You know? It'd be like that sometimes. But, hell, I, I can't throw stones at you guys. There are times where I think that, or no, I don't think. I wish, I wish that the swamp monster was real around here. That was one for us, man. I mean, like, when I looked at the book that where I was letting you guys know about different cryptarchs and all that other stuff that live out there, he was one for us, and then it turned out that he was a hoax. But then again, they said that allegedly something was living out there real at one time in the early 20s, so... Ah, oh, man. See, this is why we can't have nice things, because there's always going to be somebody out there to debunk something. But, you know, it'd be wild like that. It'd be wild like that, but when it comes to, like, you know, stories such as, like, the kids, you know, fading away and stuff like that, uh, yeah, man, um, kind of hits me hard like that, you know what I mean? Because you really want to see, like, some of these spirits live on, but there's a reason why they're spirits and why they're anchored here, because they have unfinished business. So that's one of those things to be remembered about when it comes to those sort of things. So, yeah, you know. Anyway, you guys want to go for another story before we tie it all together? Oh, by the way, yeah, I, I need to let you all know that. About my birthday, 
Um, you guys are welcome to send me any sort of uh, messages and all that jazz to tell me happy birthday. I have no problem with it. You can even call me on like some of the J360 radio programs or use the hotline to leave a message. It's entirely up to you, and you know I'll appreciate it from you all. And it's good to be right here on this earth one more time. <laughs> you know, for soon to be 37 years, and I got to build a pretty cool production company and spend a lot of the adventures with you guys so it's a win-win situation if you get me but yeah yeah i mean this is cool that we managed to make it this far oh and also like um 1116 is actually j360 productions day so that's an anniversary of like how far ahead we've been here well i'll let you know more about that later when that time comes up you just have to know about the date for that one all right all right Whew. Speaking of which, we should go ahead and dive into this being your last story tonight. This one is called Hidden. Alright, so, hunters were going missing in the woods around the village. Sometimes people found fresh human bones out there, but most of the time they didn't find anything at all. After a while, most hunters refused to go to the woods. They said there was a monster out there that snatched up people and brought them back to their lair to be eaten. Like I said, we could add that damn swamp monster, but... Anyway, back to the story. One man wasn't afraid. He didn't believe stories like that. He said it was probably just a big animal attacking people. He told everyone in the village that he would go out and kill it if they promised a big reward. The villagers were desperate. If people couldn't hunt, they couldn't eat. They told him that they would pay him a huge fortune if he killed the monster. The hunter accepted the offer and he went out to the woods one night and set up camp. It was late and he decided that he would sleep first. The next morning he would find that the animal that had been killing so many hunters... Or so he thought. He didn't sleep well. There were strange noises all throughout the night. Sometimes he even thought he heard human screams. Don't be foolish, he told himself. All those stories are just made up. The next morning he went out in search of the animal. He walked for miles through the forest looking for signs of it. He was getting far away from camp by this point. And most people who would have been scared to go out there alone... There didn't need to be monsters for them to be scared. A person could easily get lost in the woods if they weren't careful. But the hunter knew the forest well, and he wasn't worried about that. Still, he was starting to get a bad feeling. It seemed to him like something just kept looking around for him out of the corner of his eye. The problem is when he turned to look at it, it was nowhere in sight. Your mind is just playing tricks on you, he told himself. You just listen to too many stories. But he kept seeing the thing in the corner of his eye, whatever it was. It seemed like it was getting closer. It would appear for a moment right in the corner of his eye, but he couldn't get a good look. He couldn't even tell if it was like a person or an animal, but it was always gone when he tried to spot it. Then he started hearing its footsteps. Before, it had been too far away to hear anything. Now, whenever he saw it out of the corner of his eye, he also saw the sound of it. He also heard the sound of it moving closer to him. I didn't sleep very well last night, he said. No wonder I'm imagining things. But he was starting to think it wasn't all his imagination. At one point, he sat on an old log waiting for the thing to show up again. After a few minutes, it did from the corner of his eye. He spotted a figure looking at him from behind a tree. It was still for a moment, so was the hunter. He was waiting for it to move before he could look straight at it. Eventually, he heard the sound of its footsteps and saw it creep out from behind the tree. He turned as quietly as he could and quickly as he may, but again it was gone. Come out, he shouted. Show yourself. Then he saw it out of the corner of his eye coming from another direction. When he spun around to look at it, it had vanished. Then he saw it from the other direction. Every time he tried to look right at it, it disappeared, but he could tell it was getting closer. And then from the corner of his eye, he saw that it was standing beside a tree only a few feet from him and then the hunter ran to the tree and the thing was gone but it was then that he felt a claw dig into his back and he shouted out a scream of pain and fell to the ground the claw started di dragging him across the ground the hunter had tried to roll around and see what kind of animal the claw belonged to but he couldn't all he could see was the ground in front of him they got deeper in the forest and the hunter started noticing bones all along the ground human bones and then the forest went away he was being brought deep into a dark cave he screamed for help, but no one could hear him. And right before it ate him, the hunter saw the thing from the corner of his eye one last time. Damn. You know, that kind of reminds me of that um, polar bear movie I saw not too long ago. Um, I think it was... God, what was it? It was the un... 
was it the un? It wasn't called the Unteam. It was something. It was something un though. I, I I gotta go back down the line and find it. And as soon as I do, I'll bring it up in another episode. But oh my god. <laughs> or or like Leslie Nielsen's The Gray. <laughs> no, not Leslie Nielsen, Liam Nielsen. But you guys get the laugh. I'm trying to go ahead and lighten things up, you know, because we're nearing the end of the show. But it's like. Man, that is wild. Could you imagine like being out there and trying to be the greatest hunter of all time? The one to actually dispel the myth. And then the myth becomes real enough to kill you. And then chances are it probably isn't a beast anyway. It's just the way like the environment was and everything. And you ended up becoming your own worst enemy due to hallucinations. That would be a way to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like the person in the asylum that says that they are well and that they're, you know, always been well, or somebody that in the um, prison who claims that they're innocent. I mean, how often do you believe it until you don't? Not saying that everybody in a prison isn't innocent. There are innocent people in there, but you know what I mean. Like the one person that committed to doing certain things, and then all of a sudden. You know what I mean? It's just left undetermined. And that's just wild because it makes you wonder exactly what that beast was that killed it. Was it a bipedal? Was it a bear? Was it something that was not exactly a bear? Was it like something that was, you, you know, time forgot, maybe? That's some wild things to think about. Like, you know, I, I feel the scenario about that. But yeah, a hunter loves being a hunter until he's the hunt hit. So little things to keep in mind of. And speaking of hunters, I gotta go ahead and beat the crap out of Craven. I wanna see how that goes now. Yeah, boy! <laughs> but yeah, it's a pretty big week here at J360 Productions, y'all. Especially with um, my birthday coming up and everything. And like I say, you know, we're still gonna have some fun. There's gonna be plenty of Monster Fest clips to throw at you and all. And not to mention some more stuff. We're gonna finish strong with this one. But, you know, we're gonna go ahead and tie this up. And speaking of which, Jam 79 is happening tomorrow at 10. So, you know, come back here again for the party of all parties as we continue on with monster fest yep on j360 radio <laughs> and this hey man of course signing off peace guys Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com backslash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. 